areas. All right, so let's get going. This is the carp we're going to focus on. This is the common carp that we do know about and um, approve of in the waters. Um, we'll get into more specifics on them, but I do want to compare this guy to the other carp species that we do not want in our waters. If you see any of these, please do not put them back and please let us know right away. We will come meet you. We will do whatever we have to do. Um, again, my number is right below my face, so or my email address. It goes right to my work phone, so I can uh, get those emails, texts, calls. Um, and again, I'll have the number at the end of the screen. But if you catch a big head carp, silver carp, grass carp, and black carp, um, we do not want them in the waters at all. They just get too much and they will totally ruin the fishery for all the other species. Um, and they can just be, they can get dangerous too, as we've seen with some of the um, grass carp. And uh, actually the big head carp too, they all jump pretty good. So yeah. common carp's all we want to see. <coughs> All right, so carp are not a protected fish species. Uh, fun fact, they were um, actually introduced as a uh, food source. Even though we're not eating them as much as other countries do, they were introduced into the US as a food source. And uh, we'll have a slide on that coming up. They are a popular ornamental fish, which means they are used in people's ponds. And you can kind of see on the, um, their scales, they almost look like a goldfish or a koi. Um, they get pretty monstrous. Uh, 12, I'd say 12 inches is pretty small for most pretty of the carp, for the ones we see, right? And then they get up to 47 inches and five pounds to 88 pounds is the world record or at least like the record that um, has been uh, noted. And they adapt so well to all conditions, that's how they have spread across the entire world. And um, so Sean, you ac we actually created this slide based on our conversations earlier. So uh, I'll just go with, all these lines are railroads. And so they started out east, moved out west, just like all um, the railroads were built. And along the railroads is how the carp got introduced. So you can see up here, this would be the upper Colorado in Colorado, and all the way down to us um, in the lower Colorado River um, is how we have carp all the way over here. But um, you had actually talked about um, them being in Europe and eating them and all that stuff. So I'd like to have you talk more about that. Yeah, I was just explaining, uh, a lot of people aren't aware that it's like a huge uh, sport fish in Europe and a highly revered fish, just as we revere our bass out here. Um, <clears throat> I actually think they go even beyond, as I had mentioned to you, they even, they have like a lot of very specific and set rules for fishing carp as far as what nets you use, um, having wet pads. They've even introduced new laws where you have to actually have, and I was looking it up online, they had some of the spray on Amazon, but a like an antibiotic that you're required to spray inside of the, the carp's mouth every time you hook them to guarantee their safety and how they're handled. Very similar to trout, like uh, if all possible, you don't want to remove them from from the water. Um, a lot of the carp I catch, you know, I detach them from the hook right there in the water, have no need to bring them out. And it's just, um, it's a very highly revered fish. Um, they even have a lot of restrictions on different types, like baits that I use here in America, I would not be allowed to use in Europe because it's too, easy to catch the fish on those particular baits. So they want to make it more challenging. And then as far as eating them, you know, we are one of the only countries that don't eat carp. As you stated, they were brought here um, <clears throat> and, and farmed for us to eat at one point. But at some point, I guess we strayed away. I have personally eaten the carp and um, not being a, f a huge fish eater, it was actually one of the best tasting fish I've ever eaten in my life. And my, my whole family had that consensus. 
And you said that they, um, you pour, you did smoke it though, right? Yes, um, I did smoke the fish. So basically, um, I had the wood to the side and no fire touched the fish. And I just let it smoke until I thought it was ready. It was a couple of hours. And I mean, it was absolutely wonderful. And there was a gentleman at Floyd Lamb. I've been, uh, I need to find him because he used to be very active on the fishing sites. He, um, people used to literally catch them and give them to him so he could barbecue them for him because he would do them like in a sweet and sour glaze somehow. And and numerous of people said that it was just really good food. That's awesome. Yeah, um, during the carp derby that we have at Praying to Get every year at the end of April, uh, we have one guy that does a lot of conservation volunteer work across Southern Nevada. And he made um, carp stew. That was a little fishy, but when we made a... Uh, he made carp cakes the following year and that actually ended up being really tasty just like you would think like a salmon cake or yeah um, they, like the that. meat is very similar um if you saw the meat if you actually cut a carp open the first time i cut one open um, i was just totally dumbfounded the meat looked a lot like salmon like as far as the redness and the swirl um the internals are like no other. <laughs> They're very interesting. My son was actually spooked when he was uh, cleaning the fish for me because they, they're really not like the bass or catfish, but a very tasty. I would suggest getting one, you know, um, which is not hard by any means. This is about an average size fish, about, a, you know, eight, 10 pounder because the bones are going to be bigger and it'll be easier for them to fall out as because they're a very bony fish. And I do believe that's why a lot of people don't care for them. They have really big bones. And um, if you were to get a smaller one, I could see where that would be problematic as opposed to when I, um, as I was picking through the meat, the bones were just pulling right through and falling out of the meat. And it was just extremely tasty. So well, sounds like we're going to have to do a carp cleaning and cooking class. <laughs> Yeah, they, um, it reminds me, I always tell people and they laugh, it reminded me a lot of a, a pork taste. It had a very oily, um, very rich in flavor taste. It kind of just reminded me of like a, a light flavor of pork in a sense. Yeah, definitely. Uh, find those good seasonings. All right, so how everyone can try out this tasty fish. Um, you got to know where they're hiding. Um, Definitely in our ponds, rivers and lakes, um, anywhere with a nice weedy bed, giving them cover, uh, deep pockets, river channels, a couple examples here for you. Um, muddy water, and I say that mainly because they make it muddy themselves as they're rooting around and um, de-rooting plants. And one of the reasons the conservation efforts there for them to actually be eradicated in some areas is because they are so hard on an ecosystem. And uh, fun fact, they actually produce a million, they can produce a million of fry every year. So <laughs> little eggs. So uh, they can, they unfortunately are kind of like quagga mussels in a way as far as reproducing so well and adapting so well to so many environments. And the map is pretty similar to uh, the distribution of quagga mussels from the east from that Hudson River and uh, the Great Lakes all the way down across to the west. Um, also where the United States populations have started. So you'll see them in shallows rifling around. So it's fun if you're walking around any of the urban ponds, look down, it's probably a carp, that nice dark shadow uh, swimming along. And um, also they'll be hiding in the tall vegetation like over here. Is that what you look for when you're out there? I do, especially when I'm at the lake. Um, I'm definitely looking for brackish water, um, still water. As you say, there, you know, a goldfish are in their family as goldfish can live in brackish water. They, they really like it a lot. And I look for a lot of cover, almost <clears throat> the same setting you would look for in, in like large amount bass fishing. You're going to find in carp fishing and you're pretty much if you can find shaded brush area trees and branches that are coming into the water, you're almost guaranteed to find not only one because they, they go in schools, you'll find a couple in that area. 
Awesome. All right. So um, on the Fish Brain app, one of the things we look for um, when we're looking for what everyone's catching throughout the week and the fishing reports getting put together. Also feel free to uh, send us messages of what you're catching. Um, we won't give away secret locations. I definitely don't want to send a bunch of people to one cove, I promise. Um, but some of the hot spots are Government Wash and Kingman Wash. Um, Big time. Yep, and we and I know I've seen them under the Hemingway Fishing Pier, which is a very small fishing pier. So if there's somebody out there, I promise there are other great fishing locations nearby. Um, and then where I've seen Sean and Sean's helped me with some youth groups was out at uh, Floyd Land Park, one of our awesome urban <laughs> fisheries. <laughs> and we'll Big show, time. Right? I think. Oh, coming up. So we'll show off Sean's fish here in a little bit. Um, so go ahead, Sean. What are your favorite carp foods? <laughs> I mean, of course, everyone knows about corn, and corn is gonna uh, is gonna be a great um, like uh, bait to use. I actually had got some of my rigs. I hope you can see it. That's what I was telling you. Uh, let me try to get it still. I use a small little number six hook. That's my favorite, the Gamagatsu Circle. Number six hook. I'll try to get it a little closer. Yeah. And then awesome. Let me try, try to get Can it. You put more. your hand behind it too. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. And then like um, also the number eight circle hook, but that's going to be when the bite gets light. Now the corn is really good during like the spring and summer months, but when you get into the winter, it's going to get really slow with the corn. As I was explaining to you, their metabolism slows down and they're not capable of digesting the corn as much. Um, so you're going to need to go to some of the softer foods. Uh, absolute, I mean, you know, I use a lot of dry chum. As you saw on this, I use what they call the method feeder, which um, I pack a lot of dry chum around there. And then at the end of the leader, which is three to four inches, I'm attaching whatever my um, bait is. But um, a killer bait is good old fashioned night crawlers. Literally all of my largest carp I have caught have all been off good meaty night crawlers. And usually I'll stack um, two or three of them on one hook to have them like moving around and a lot of action. And those bigger carp, see they, they're in schools eating and those bigger carp, just like any other fish or any other animal, they're gonna make sure they get the best picking and never fails. I get some of my biggest carp on um, night crawlers. Now, bread is a great attractant, just regular old fashioned bread. Um, a lot of times, especially when I'm being lazy, like two days ago, I just simply get bread. I like to use the water from the lake and I just smash it around this. My, my um, main line, which I use 30 pound test goes through this, um, through this method feeder, oh, it's falling apart. And then it has a barrel swivel, which attaches in there. And a lot of times I'll just um, use bread, but of course, dog food is awesome, cornmeal. There's so many different, I mean, like you say, they like stinky foods, they like sweet foods, but I'll leave you with this. A lot of people aren't aware they're extremely fond of spicy foods. And especially when you're having a slow bite, if you turn to, um, turn to like uh, chili powders, curry, paprika, things of that nature, it, it actually has been proven scientifically. It, it, it causes them to want to go into a feeding frenzy for some reason or into feed mode. And it is very helpful. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I forgot I had to mute myself. Because okay. um, <laughs> of the construction of the backyard. Um, the feeding frenzy here when we, uh, when people feed them popcorn at the marina. <laughs> yeah, and see what a lot of people also, I'd like to make people aware, when carp, when you get them in the box, they're in the box. They're not like, and, and please, I'm not talking down on any other fish, but they don't get spooked as easy. Um, like when they're in a feeding frenzy, if you pull one out of that, that school, 
I always joke with people and say it's like I wonder if the other fish are interested in what they where they're going what they're doing you know they want to get involved but if I can get them in the in, a, in the box as I call it um, you can just pick them one after another now I'm not going to say it's the easiest fish to fish but it's not rocket science especially once you get them in that feeding frenzy and you can also entice them to when your bite is slow if you chum the water it'll cause them to start competing for food which will you know intensify the bite and if you can get into a nice school you will literally catch fish into your arms and fingers cramp up literally uh, with the average fish being you know about 10 to 12 pounds nice fight especially for any newbies <laughs> great fight just keep your drag always keep your drag loose I mean, I, I have my drag to the point where I can just very gently pull line out. You have to learn to be able to adjust it as you're fighting the fish. I fortunately like to run the bait runner reels. So I have the two drag system. I have the first drag set extremely, extremely light um, because they're extremely smart fish and will reject the food within milliseconds. And then once I start to reel in my uh, primary um, drag engages which i have already set to a preset tension that i'm comfortable with but i've had them break 20 pound braid in front of the warden i had him break 20 pound braid he didn't oh. believe me i was sitting there playing my sad violin i was at floyd and just so happened there's like a uh, koi uh back in mulberry and i caught hold of that koi and it broke it broke 20 pound braid right in front of me so yeah i think i there's a, there are two back there that I was trying to get some of, uh, uh, during one of our field trips, we were trying to get the kit, the, them to bite, but they just weren't having There's some it. monsters back. They're very smart. They, especially that, uh, that koi is extremely smart, but I've met people who have caught it and they've shown me pictures. So I know it's not the Loch Ness monster. It really exists. And the ward and I actually, after it broke my line, it swam back, swam back around like looked at us like ha ha and went on about its way. I chased that fish for like two months straight before I gave up. Aw, <laughs> out there waiting for you. Yeah. Um, so Rob is joining us um, and he brought up corn flies as his favorite and fly fishing, definitely fly fishing for them. Yes, Rob is a beast. <laughs> and then our new friend, William, um, does a combo jello, breadcrumbs, and corn all mixed up. And I have to also give out my new favorite secret that I actually used for catfish a couple weeks ago too, right when they stopped, was um, I, mar I was telling Sean that I take the corn juice and separate oh, yeah. it and pour that into the pot with like almost a cup. So it's like one to one, make a simple syrup. So I make a corn sugar water and then I put the corn back in it and just put it in a glass jar, mason jar, and then I just keep it. So I actually have some corn and then I just put it in the freezer so it's out of the way and out of my husband's mind. And um, during the carp rodeo, we were able to get quite a few off of that and I just kept mixing it out. And honestly, one can made so much bait. It was pretty awesome. And then I have one baggie left um, and so we took a few pieces out and uh, went out to um, Sunset Park and got my daughter her catfish. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah, I was awesome. going to say, probably have some good success with catfish on that as well. Yes, yes, they love that. The baits go hand in hand, literally. I mean, literally just two days ago, I caught one, and I, this is not the first time. Well, let me rephrase that because the fish played me. But I, I hooked up one on a sardine, and like I was using a um, – bait holder hook, which is not, you know, a hook you should be using for carp fishing, but they'll, they'll eat like anchovies as well here and there. Yes, just no anchovies at the urban ponds, but um, I Correct. have seen uh, anchovies out at Lake Mead um, when people were going for stripers or catfish and ended up getting a carp, so that's pretty fun to hear. Um, you might have some new friend requests, Sean. Oh, I always welcome them. Uh, there's not a person I turn down. Um, and especially when Facebook, right? 
Correct on Facebook. I, on, if you can find me anywhere, if you see me in the streets, I, 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 I just am extremely happy to help. Even if whether it be carp, boating, motors, um, you know, I just I find a lot of joy in that. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna go through this one real quick. Um, like we were saying, the 20 pound line sometimes isn't gonna be enough if you get that awesome carp. Um, you, you were saying, um, well, I'll just fly through this so we can show off some of your catches. And um, go ahead and use a heavier anchor if you're using a drop shot, but be careful, um, definitely in the urban ponds, uh, getting that weight stuck in some of the brush. And Here's then, a great weight right there, there that go. I use, a two ounce. Um, actually, let's see, this is a, yeah, the two ounce uh, cannonball. I usually don't tell people about these. Uh, only place I can find them is at Sportsman at the bottom in the little wood uh, shell of things, but these are phenomenal weights to use for carp fishing. So Rob, you might have to request some more of those Correct. now. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> there. <laughs> um, and then Peg. Yeah, good, good luck. It was, it was kind of a frenzy on uh, weights today. I'm glad I wasn't at work today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to get anything I've seen. Uh, everyone's stocking up for the fish apocalypse too, for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going anywhere, I promise. Um, and so, yeah, so just learn your waters. Um, thank you. I'm glad we have the chat going and you guys can talk too along there. Um, William seconds your cannonball weight there. And um, just learn your waters. And that's going to be your best success for any of this. Like, know your spots. Um, here's a different, um, not, didn't come out too clear. But if you look up cat, uh, carp rigs, or as you can see, this one's for catfish from Catfish Edge. Um, it'll show all kinds of different drop shot rigs. That's uh, a very successful rig. Um, yes. And it'll give you this option and a couple others. And then that way you have the different height off the bottom, right? Yeah, that's a great rig to use during the summer. Like right now at Floyd, um, there's going to be so much like weeds and algae back there at Mulberry. It gets hard, especially if you're using just simple methods like corn, things of that nature. So you want something that's going to bring the bait just slightly off the bottom, you know, so they can be presented to them. Um, as you showed in your previous slide with some of the baits, they use what they call boilies, floating boilies which is very similar. You could use like a Carolina rig, but if you, right there, yep, that's a boilie. It, they have hair rigs, different rigs, but basically that's gonna do the same thing. Even though it's a, a, a rig that's fished at the bottom, it floats up and it presents itself, you know, a couple of inches or however long you make the lead. Now myself personally, I, and some of the other carp guys do absolutely phenomenal with the boilies. I don't have any luck with them, um, but it, it, you know, it's a very good bait. And so we definitely wanted to get all this info out there so that your all your faces look like this kids, um, yes. that beginning fish. I mean, I can't even imagine catching that as a kid. You know. <laughs> <laughs> And you can see another, this honestly, I don't know if this is homemade or. Um, yeah, that is a, um, that is a for grass carp. As you I notice, was, that's a grass carp in there. That's a um, very simple, uh, very similar to what I was telling you with the boilies, like a hair rig. But on that one, it's very simple. They just use a rubber band, and the fish inhales that bait, and then the hook presents itself as either they're eating it or rejecting it. Gotcha. I was gonna say honestly, I've I've had rabbits. Um, my daughters had rabbits. And I, that looks like rabbit food even. So that might be an option. You know what? <laughs> Put a rubber it band might on be. <laughs> yeah, it might be. I know I see it all the time on uh, like all the big carp tackle and Amazon, things of that nature. I just don't fish grass carp, you know, so I never really, you know, bought any of that particular bait. Gotcha. Um, and so also because it's such an awesome beginning fish, it is all over the urban ponds. So just like this guy caught in the middle of LA, which is 50 pounds, I can't even imagine that. Um, oh, but 
<laughs> yeah, Floyd Lamb's in the northwest. Sunset's right in the middle of, technically in the middle of Vegas now. And then yeah. Lorenzi Park is the old original. Um, and you can see them, some awesome fish swimming around in those waters too. So just get out there and try. Um, oh, so yeah, I zoomed in on this one. It didn't come out very clear. Was it 2018 or 2019? That I believe was 2019. That should have been last year. Uh, let me see. Uh, actually, oh, yeah. you know what? At Floyd Lamb, 2018, 19 were, were some two really big years for me, so I can't call it to be honest with you. But I want to say, all right, 18 might be all right. <laughs> so there's that one. Oh, and then there's the record. Yes. Uh, we can go back to your other one too. That yeah, is an amazing fish. On the Las Vegas fishing page, you also um, posted your other big, your biggest fish. Uh, which oh yeah, that was that was fun. That was actually caught on a to a five like a five and a half foot big five nine ninety nine rod with eight pound test. There's other anglers like Carmelo that's out there catching them on two pound tests, and I. I I, my hat's off to that gentleman at all times. His mother is out there catching four foot long carp, you know, 26 pounds. I mean, yeah, it, some great carp anglers out there as well. Some, a lot yeah. of great carp anglers. Because they're, they pull so hard and just that dead weight, you definitely got to take your time with it, right? Correct. Um, I always say you'll never wonder if you have a carp on the line. Um, the fight is like no other. They're like a torpedo. They just go and go and go. And when you especially, I, I will honestly say the carp, in my opinion, and I actually just read up on this, um, the carp at Floyd Lamb are far more aggressive than the carp at, like me. I mean, significantly aggressive. Um, I've had carp you know, I'll fight them for 10, 15 minutes. And then as soon as I get them to shore to net them, I mean, they take off again. And I don't understand where they're getting this energy from. And I mean, they're, they, I, I will stand firmly by that pound for pound consistently. This is going to be the hardest fighting freshwater fish in this state. Like pound for pound. You'll catch a five to seven pounder and it'll feel like a 15 pounder. You'll think you have some kind of record on the end of the, on the end of the uh, line. And when you pull it in, it's like, wow, you know, this little fish was doing that. It's very aggressive fish. So much fun. So yeah, definitely something to get the kids out on too, or your new friend, if you need a new fishing buddy, right? You know. All right, so these are gonna be some of our goals, Sean, for our next fish cooking class. <laughs> Yeah, this, as you brought this up, I'm like, wow, you know, in some countries, um, and I'm saying this, I've seen it personally, like online, this is, con carp is considered a, de a delicacy in Iraq, and it goes for like $300 a pound in five, six star restaurants. It's insane. I'm like, I catch all of these carp over here at $300 a pound. Like, are you serious? Yeah, there's no limit on carp here. Um, they are abundant at printing it, so please take as many as you want. Correct. Um, they are good for food. Um, and I do, while we're on here, I do want to go back to a question we had. They're great fertilizer, too, if I could interject. I'm sure yeah. a lot of people are aware of that. My wife is a big gardener, and there, you know, have been times I've brought her carp home and she's used as, as fertilizer. And you know, I, I firmly believe as long as you're putting, and this is with any fish, as long as you're putting any animal or fish to use that you have harvest, that it is totally okay. You know, I'm just, you know, I don't like when I see people like throwing them on shore and abusing them. I mean, even if you're not looking to target the fish, it is still a life. And, you know, it deserves to be repurposed if it's going to be harvested, you know. And some people throw them out to, and, uh, to feed the coyotes, but I do actually want to discourage that only because just like the ducks and the geese at the park, um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not good for them to come up to you fishing. I know it's cute and everything like that. And actually I might have to start adding a new slide into these presentations. Um, 
but it's really dangerous for the ducks, the fish, and the coyotes to be getting Correct. close to you. Um, and if you're not paying attention, you don't want to get nipped by a coyote because they are a rabies vector species. So potentially they could be carrying it. Um, and you don't want to get bit by something like that that thinks he's going to get fed by you. So um, Very please correct. don't throw your carp on the, actually just please don't throw any of your waste on the shoreline. Even if you clean the fish, it, I do recommend disposing of it. Um, and depending on where you're fishing from and depending on your catch, it is actually recommended to go ahead and gut the fish and um, yes. but keep the head on and all the scales and everything so that the game wardens know what you're bringing in and bringing home. Um, so I saw that question, definitely wanted to get to that. And also uh, I saw somebody ask, when is the best time? <laughs> if you see some of my lamb pictures, I just look like I am so burnt under the sun because the best times I have had catching carp is when it's at its hottest point because they really adore the warm water. And um, I actually, I have no problem with giving up my spots. If you go back to Mulberry where the ditch is to where the, where it winds around all the way to the other side where the bathrooms and the bench is, that's a prime spot where I used to catch carp, but unfortunately it's right under the sun. But I mean, I could have, I, I knew a gentleman up there had a 26 fish day and that was between like 12 and four in the middle of August. But wow. he's also an avid carp fisherman as well. Yeah, and with those, if we're not gonna keep them all right, we wanna keep them wet and in the water and get them right back out, take a quick picture and get them out just like we do with the fishing groups. Um, and actually, it's best to oh, kind of, if you ever have a chance, I mean, there again, if you want to get into carp fishing, it's good to have, get a wet mat, um, but it's, you know, not always, you know, uh, possible for somebody to get something like that. So you could simply get a yoga mat. And I, I had to learn myself because I didn't, was not taking proper care of the carp. They're so big, they're hard to hold and carry and pose with, you know, a 19 pound fish after you've been fighting it 30 minutes, you don't want to hold it. So it's, you can get something like a yoga mat, dip it in the water, and then have it right there where you can place the carp on there and protect it, you know, just as you would any other fish. That's a really good idea. Yeah, those in the, um, those foam, or not foam, why am I thinking? The plastic rubbery nets are great for catching the lead seam. Yes, that is very important too, especially they're very similar to catfish, but even more so their dorsal fins are so thick and if you're using just the regular standard Walmart um, uh, net, you're going to have a world of a time getting that fish out of the net. It's best to use the little small plastic with the very small gaps in it. Just makes your life easier as well. Definitely. Um, through our website, we do have the fishable waters, and there's even a Google interactive map. And come to find out, you could actually create your own uh, fishable waters maps. You can put in all your favorite hotspots, put in the little notes too, just like you see when you pull up a location on Google Map. Um, you can put in like what bait you're using, what fish you're using and all that fun stuff. So I definitely wanted to take note of that. And then um, fishing reports, we will put that in there. Probably start highlighting some more um, carp. Um, and uh, recreate responsibly um, with everything important. going on it's still recommended to fish close to home that way you don't have to make a lot of stops along the way um, but whatever close to home to you is I know my family's finally gotten up to where we can go a few hours so Kirch is only two and a half hours north so we can always go up there and not have to stop anywhere along the way um, practice social distancing and that's basic angler ethics to give your fishing neighbor some room. Um, a, I saw a picture a little while ago from Floyd <coughs> Lamb and it had a line of people getting into, trying to get into Floyd Lamb. If you see that, um, I do recommend just turning around and maybe yeah. going to another Not worth place. it. Not worth it, right? And, um, Plus with carp fishing, you do need a lot of room. 
because those fish are running. You're going to just get tangled up with someone anyway. Right? Yeah, even your kids, you don't want them that close to you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the middle picture there at uh, Veterans Memorial Park, um, we had 10 youth uh, bass fishers out helping teach some new anglers. And you can see one group here, one group's way over here, and then the other group's way down there. And and I mean, it was a walk, it, you know, it was a good walk back and forth and everyone had room just in case the kids um, tied up and uh, wash your hands. And once I do like that, especially for this presentation on carp is that slime has so much acid, especially in carp, right? And oh my stars. I honestly, like when I do the carp rodeo, like I feel like I look like a wuss, but I, I always say it's because I'm touching so many of your guys' carp because we weigh them all. And I just, my hands can't handle that. <laughs> like, yeah, you are very, very, I keep a, a nice size. I actually make my own hand sanitizer. Well, I'm lying. My wife makes me a hand sanitizer <laughs> out of pure aloe vera and alcohol. Um, Non-scented. She keeps it on my boat because yes, carp are gooey and slimy and yeah <laughs> i mean you, when you become like um an experienced carp angler some people don't believe me but i can seriously smell when a school of carp come in at lake me that's the the smell you can literally smell them from under the water when you have a nice size school come in i get excited actually but you know most people probably don't like that smell <laughs> <laughs> um I was trying to find the exact term of it. So the slime is a protective clothing. I wanted to answer Correct. why they're more uh, uh, specific. I will, Chelsea, I will have to get you an answer. Um, I do not have one right now, but um, all, I would say it's based on their DNA and their how and why they are so adaptable to so many different waters. Um, so the slime naturally is a protective coating and for carp who are so, well they root around and then they are so adaptable um, that acidity is a, a, a defense mechanism too. So that's just something that they're better with. But honestly the catfish the other day that I helped my daughter with, um, I definitely got a little bit more uh, <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it honestly broke out and it reminded me of one of the anglers on one of the groups that was saying something about his skin breaking out from uh, striped bass. So I think it's just honestly like different people, different things. So for me personally, it's more acidic too. Um, yeah, and I think you are correct. I think that is a, you know, a protectant that they have. I mean, there's not a water. They estimate that uh, the carp is in every state in every water except for Maine, every continental state. So, I mean, they can literally live in any environment, in, you know, any type. I mean, unfortunately, they're living in toxic waters. They're, I think it's what out in Michigan where they tried to put the electrical fences under the water to stop them from hitting the, it's one of the, the Great Lakes or something. And I mean, now they're passing through electricity. They've learned to resist the electricity to, to get where they need to go. They're extremely resilient. Yeah, they're just really adaptable. There are the coyote version of the water. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> um, so they can feed all day and that's what Sean, um, Kenny was asking if they are more prone to fish mornings and evenings. When it's warmer, yes. Some fish, sometimes the water temperatures are great. It's definitely going to be the sun effect too and the shade. So um, some of the school groups we take out, we have to take out between nine and 12 just because of getting on the bus before, well, hopefully I get to do this again, but, uh, <laughs> in the past, um, we had one bank that was, sh uh, shaded along the edge. So the bluegill would actually be right there under the shade and then we could cast out right past it and then entice them in. So, um, many fish actually just prefer the shadows. So, but it's harder to fish those areas with hooks. So that's when 
you get into well morning and evenings easier because you have the shadows on the water. So that's just something more to think of and the temperatures of the water. Um, now the benefit of nighttime is they, they have great vision and they have great, um, they actually sense sound actually a little bit better than the average fish, which most people aren't aware of. So if you do have the opportunity, especially to go out to Lake Mead, like the Hemingway area, um, late night, you'll get nonstop action with the carp out there. And I think we've had some awesome carp in the area. And while it was quiet and I was setting up, I would see them jump in. As soon as the kids showed up, there was nothing I could put on that hook to get them to bite. Have so, you ever seen a carp boil? Uh, only when my kids have given them popcorn at the marinas. Oh. <laughs> One morning I was at uh, in between, uh, well, basically at the Hemingway launch, this is about right, right before sunrise. And I was in one of my inflatable boats oh. and there was a carp boil. It scared the life out of me. I was ready to, to leave. <laughs> it was so intense and so massive. And I knew it wasn't bass because it was the way they were jumping out of the water and tail slapping the water. And I was like, wow, it, it was a very breathtaking experience to say the least. That's awesome. I do love getting to see the carp jump at sunrise out there, being out there early enough to get to see them coming all out. So yeah, that's definitely something to see. And hopefully I'll get to do that in a month or two. Um, meet some of you guys out at the lake. Oh, it took off on me again. One, hold on, going back real quick. Um, if you catch an awesome fish, please let me know, and I will be more than happy to help you. Seriously, my mouth. There we go. Try this again. Um, at takemefishing.org, they have a first fish certificate, and I'd be more than willing to help you or present that to you at the office um, to your child. Um, whoever gets that awesome fish, um, don't forget to have your fishing license. You technically um, actually, I take it back. You would need your fishing license because you're most like you're more than likely to catch something that you're not intending to catch. So, say you're out fishing for a carp, there's a likelihood that you're going to catch a catfish because they're in that water. Yes. So you need a fishing license. Um, pack it in, pack it out. There's so many people out and about. There's not enough garbage cans and there's not enough maintenance workers. So please just bring an extra garbage bag and take something home with you. We have made it on to um, one of the top 40 states um, that hashtag clean my water. Um, so we are not the last state that cleaned our rivers and our waters. So that was really awesome to see you guys. And I love seeing all your efforts when you go out and share that with everyone. Um, not everyone can be awesome, but we should all strive for that, right? Um, check the weather conditions monsoon season still coming up I want to say tomorrow it might be a little bit more cloudy I didn't get into the depths of it so just be careful uh, with the wind conditions and know your site conditions and feel free to check the fishing report we will help you with that um, we will look over some more questions Sean did we miss anything that you can think of no I'm seeing most of um so you're trying to answer as many questions as I could answer in there. Like I say, I would just really encourage people to to go out and give them a try, give them a chance. You know, um, I think sometimes and some people feel a little embarrassed to say they fish carp or, you know, feel like they're going to be ostracized or made fun of and this, that, and other. And it's okay. You know, I'm a carp angler and I'm proud of it. Um, I go out to fish for the fight. And if it's a fight you're looking for, um, then again, it's the carp. I mean, there's times I leave the lake and I literally feel like I've been jumped or mugged or something. You know, my body is sore and I'm wondering why do I do this to myself, you know? But um, once I, you know, because I haven't been fishing as long as most of these people that are anglers online that have been fishing all their life. I've always fished, but not an avid fisherman. So once I started fishing, everything was about the fight. I just wanted a good fight. 99% of every fish I catch goes back. Bass, catfish, carp, 
because I'm not a huge fish eater. And again, if I'm not going to put, put it to purpose, I'm not going to harvest it. But I just think if people really gave them a chance and um, like I say, I always tell people, you don't have to make it your target fish, but give them a whirl. And um, I, I think they'll find out they're a lot more challenging than, than they think. You know, I, I, the one I caught, so I had one play me off the sardine over in the cove right across from Hemingway. Then I came back to the tires and um, I caught a nice female there. And she was going, trying to go in the tires and under the boat. I mean, I use an ugly stick and I also have a eight foot Shimano that I broke the tip off of that's he medium heavy, you know, really stout rods because I mean, they'll bend them over and make them look like the letter U, <laughs> you know, as I'm fighting them. But it's just a great fight, very intense. There's times when <clears throat> after I've um, actually brought a fish in that my hands are just shaking like with adrenaline because, you know, throughout that whole fight, I thought I was going to lose a fish or whatever, but it's an amazing, amazing species to, to fish. Definitely. Yeah. Now I have a new fish to get my daughter on. <laughs> yeah. And especially for the young angler, you know, um, I think that's something that that really enticed me in the beginning, you know, um, fish and bass, you know, it, it takes strategy. You have to learn, you know, what they're hitting, what color, what are they hitting, the, you know, a rattle trap, top water, swim bait, this, that, and the other. It's not as complicated with the carp fishing. Um, the complication comes in is actually bringing them to the boat, to be honest with you. Um, once you can get down how to properly rig up, what to look for. As I have told you, one of the big keys to look for, especially at like Floyd Lamb, the parks are really easy. Look for the bubbles in the water. Now, it's easy to get it mistaken with the vegetation and the pond breathing and letting out carbon dioxide or whatever it's doing. But when you see bubbles that look like someone blowing um, like bubbles in milk with a straw, you know carp are sitting there. You can literally cast you know, a, a two ounce cannonball right over their head, they're not going to leave, especially if it's something there that's interesting, uh, they're interested in. And um, also just remember to fish them shallow. Um, most of my uh, fish I catch 10 feet away from shore. Not, you don't have to throw it all the way out there? <laughs> no, not at all. Like my biggest fish I've caught at Floyd Lab, literally it got to a point where I had almost forgot how to cast because I underhand cast so much. Like I can underhand cast and put the two, two ounce cannonball and a little uh, a, a, a can of corn, you know, 20 feet away. I've gotten so good at just tossing it underhand, but no, you, you just, you want it far, far enough away from them where they can't see you. But 10 feet is more than sufficient. You know, you can go out as far as like 20 feet and that's if like, you know, they're getting spooked or, you know, because they'll get to a point where you'll fish out a, a certain spot and they just, they'll kind of migrate away from that area. And there are times, you know, like when that happens, I'll go across the pond and yeah, I'll toss it 20 yards because, you know, I want to make sure they don't see me. But as long as they don't see you, because they, they have excellent, put it this way, if you can see them, they can see you. So. Good notes. Um, real quick, just want to say thank you everyone for coming. Uh, we yes, had a great thank attendance. You. Thank you, Sean, for hosting with me. This is awesome. It was an honor. <laughs> and we'll do more classes for sure. Um, thanks for watching, Joe, one of our real anglers. Um, Big thanks to William, too. I see he's been in yes. the chat box helping out a whole lot. Yeah. I'm not the most com you know, computer guy type guy. <laughs> so I yeah. was trying to keep up. You did awesome. Well, that's what we have our amazing Nicole for. She's my go-to. Thank you to Nicole, Nicole as well yeah. and Rob. Yes, and Rob had to bow out. He's helping at the shooting complex. Um, Correct. And Rob is at Sportsman's Warehouse and Aaron Heath is also at Sportsman's Warehouse Henderson. So we have Henderson and Northwest. Um, shout out to those guys that definitely, definitely. helped you guys at the store. So it's awesome. And Rob um, got me started on fishing. He's the one that actually um, taught me a lot of what I know, to tell you the truth. Yeah, Rob's an amazing veteran. Amazing event. gentleman. Yes, U.S. veteran and veteran of fishing and fly veteran fishing. Veteran of many cloths. Yeah. <laughs>
So yeah, thank you, William, for your help with some of the questions. I'm glad we were able to leave the chat open for you guys too. Um, great conversation and we'll all talk soon. Um, shout out, oh, on your way out, if you could please uh, fill in the survey on what you like, didn't like, um, what you'd like to see next. And um, we do have more of these webinars coming up and hopefully in a couple of weeks, we will have some more amazing guest stars for uh, crappie fishing in Southern Nevada. So thank you all for coming and we will see you all later. Thank you, Abby. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Nicole, as well. I really, really, I'll watch this for the rest of my life. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. This will be recorded on YouTube as well. So. Yes. <laughs> this, is, this is really cool. Thank you. My pleasure. Have a good night and happy, safe holiday weekend. Same to all of you. Have a safe time. Thank you so much.